हेलो महेश हेलो दिनेश इवनिंग Awesome. Did you had any luck uh, launching the initial VM? Hi Manoj. Uh, I think I really have to change my PC, so I'm planning to buy a new one because my old one is not supporting. It's not having that capacity. Yep, you need at least thirty two gig RAM to run that. Yeah, so I think I have to buy a new one. For it, or else, like, need to remove a lot of software from my system. Okay. Yeah. Dinesh, how about you? Uh, I have done the machine. So it's Returning. working. The, my RAM is a little bit low. I have ordered the uh, RAM, but they sent me a different one. I, I ordered the 32 and they gave me 16. It's running okay, but uh, I'm going to swap it with 32. Okay, makes sense. Okay, we can uh, get started. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, so today we are going to uh, see about object initialization rules. Still, we are in business administration. Last couple of classes, we have seen about workflow administration. But we didn't go in deep in workflow administration because that requires coding. So I want you guys to set up uh, your machine so you can code along with me. Um, so we are continuing business administration. So today, we are going to see object initialization show rules. In short, we call it as OARs. So what is the OAR? So we already talked about what's the OAR in our previous session, but I'll give you an overview of an OAR. So when a new business object is created, we can default some values for a few attributes, depends on from where it is created or who is creating it. Okay. Um, so let's say uh, I'm creating a document. In a folder, so it doesn't have a folder now. Let's say I have a design folder. Now I have a design folder under my product. Now, uh, when I create a document of a specific type, let's say test document. See, by default, it will create under the default folder. So, so this is the default folder. So it's under here. I have a design folder. But I want to configure my system. If I create a test document, it should always create under design. So it should auto-select to design. So how do I do that? That's where OIR comes into play. Or... I want a different lifecycle template for my test document, or I want a different team template for my test document. I want a different numbering sequence for my test document. So that's what we are going to see uh, in today's class. Yeah. So out of the box, basically, there are six things, the OIR controls, okay? Uh, we can skip security level because it's very rarely used and not many companies use that, but these five are primarily controlled using OERs. So numbering schemes. <clears throat> if we create a document in out-of-the-box system, see the number? It says a 10-digit number starts with one, and it keeps incrementing by one. So now since I have created nine documents, it's at nine. We create a new document now. We 
it is 10. It will keep implementing. But most of the companies will have their own numbering sequence depends on the type of the object. Okay. For example, for document, it, start, it should start with WT hyphen 0001. Okay. So it has five characters, I mean, five digit numbering and uh, three non numeric characters. Out of the box, it's not available. But that's where OER comes into play. We will see how we implement that numbering sequence here. And for change notice, my company have a numbering sequence that should start with CN underscore the product name underscore three digit character. Okay. We'll see how we implement a numbering scheme, a custom numbering scheme. Also, we will see how to uh, update our OER to create specific object in a specific folder. And also we'll talk about a custom versioning scheme. For still now we have seen A.1, A.2 or 1.1, 1.2. Today we'll see how to create a custom versioning scheme. Also we'll update our OER to follow a custom life cycle. These are the uh, so team template uh, is not very important, but these four are key. Okay. I'm in my VM. You'll also have the same setup like what I have uh, here. Um, so we can define OER at site level, org level, and container level. And you all know the difference. Uh, creating or uh, configuring a business rule at site, org, and container level. Okay, let's create a org specific OER first. Okay, let's create a, a org specific OER. Okay, let's define a number for a document. Okay, how do we uh, see what is the existing OER? How do we see, okay, what rules are defined for a specific business object? Okay, go to object initialization administration. Okay, here we can delete any existing OER. So anything you see site context, those are all out of the box OERs. Okay, don't want to touch that. And if you want to create a new one, you create this icon. If you want to download a composite OER, so this is what going to give us a complete rule defined for a specific object. Now I'm going to select WT document. It's a test document, let's state. The first part defines the value for the attribute, and there is uh, a second part which tells how the attribute should display in the UI. Okay, till this attribute value, see, I have number, I have folder, I have team template, lifecycle ID, and they have something called department also. So we don't need to worry about the department and the versioning sequence. These are not required. Okay, so number, folder. So out of the box, it creates a default folder and a team template takes the default team and basic life cycle and it follows Harvard series. And we'll talk about the constraint later. So now let's make a small change. So what this argument tells us is this is standard gen wt.enterprise.sequence generator okay this is a standard syntax for defining a sequence so where do we find what all the sequence available 
if you go to your uh, SQL developer, okay, uh, it's also configured uh, in the VM. If you expand the sequence, so I, I have connected to the Winchell database. So this is your table. So what all the tables available out of the box, you'll see it here. But there's also option called sequence here. See this one? So these are the out of the box sequence available. So one of them is WT document ID underscore sequence. If you click that, it will give the information. So the minimum value is one. So it starts with one and increment by one. So the next sequence will give two, three, four, that's the increment. And the last number is 11. If you see uh, the last document created uh, number is 10. So next time if you use the sequence, it's going to give us 11. Uh, and this is the sequence name from the database. Um, also, I have created a custom sequence here with my name. We can also create custom sequence. Okay, there's a script. You need to log into uh, SQL. I'll give you the, if you want to log into uh, uh, SQL developer using Winchill Plus, you have to type SQL Plus. The username is db user all small letters and the password is db password now i can run any uh, sql script on this database also i can run it from here from sql developer both ways it should work but we don't we are not going to create a new sequence here we'll see how we update the existing sequence this is my sequence name uh, the 10 uh, implements how many uh, character the number should be, and the zero is the padding. You want a five digit number, let's change it to five and see what happens. Now create a new OER. Saved it. Need to select a type so to which type this way I should apply. So I will select document. Just the rules file. Okay. Since I applied this OIA at org level, unless a container specific OIA is defined, it's going to follow the arc specific OER. So let's try to create a new document and see what it shows now. See, now it has only five uh, digit number for test document. Now I created a OER for WT document, um, but I want to add a prefix to this number just for the test document. Then what should I do? Okay. Add a few test cases here. Say TD denotes test document and it should be seven digit. And I want this to happen only for the test product. So I go to test product, object initialization rule, new object initialization rule.
I find my type to which I need to apply. Okay. Now let's see if I created a test document, what will happen? Now uh, the TD is appended uh, in front of the document and it's a seven digit number and it follows the same sequence because both the OER define uh, is following the WT document sequence. So if I want a custom sequence applied for that uh, TBCT test document, then we need to use this custom sequence I have defined. I'm not going to create a new uh, OER because the OER is already defined. I just need to update it. I'll create a document. This one starts with 1000 because if you see my sequence, the last number is 1000. I created my sequence in this way, it should start with 1000. So it will start from 1000, 1001, 1002. <clears throat> Wait, any questions so far? So what is the difference between this uh, minimum and the last number? Uh, minimum value is the starting number. If I say minimum 1000, I cannot go below anything of my minimum value. Okay. So minimum, so here the minimum value is one and maximum value is 99999. So this sequence can generate any number between the minimum and maximum. And whenever I increment my sequence, it should increment by one. If I say 10, what will happen is if I start with one, then it will next sequence will be 11, 21, 31. And if I start with last number as 1000, then it will be 1000, 1010, 1020. So these three are important, the minimum, the increment. So usually we won't give, give the minimum. So out of the box, it will take one and the maximum is also set predefined. The increment by and the last number is the two uh, arguments we are going to give while creating a custom sequence. Okay, because uh, when we are defining the last number as thousands, so then it will, uh, like the minimum value, it won't. Uh... No, uh, see, Last number is from where it needs to start. That's all. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, I'm moving from a different PLM application to Winchell. They already have documents created. Okay. And it follows uh, some numbering sequence. And the last document they have is like... Uh, 89,723. When I bring all those documents inside, if I use the out of the box sequence, then it will start with one, right? But the one already exists, it will throw an error. So what I will do is I will say my last number is 89,781. So it will start from 782 in my new, new system. Oh, okay, got it.
uh, and in the real time uh, what this document uh, contains of like whatever the parts we create so it will be uh, related to the parts um like so manual. anything so i'll give you one example so in my company uh it's a med device company so to perform any action in my company you need to finish few uh, few mandatory trainings okay if you want to be a quality approver you need to finish the quality approver training and uh, the documents we have it in winchel it's not necessarily the document is always related to a part okay document management is a separate module so the training we we constantly uh, update our training document and uh, when they try to complete a training it will try to download the released version of the document the number is going to be same okay uh, now it is an in work but when the user try to complete the training so it will try to download the released version of the document so you know what i'm telling so it's mm -hmm. used for document management it's a separate module okay. and also you said uh, if a part requires some reference document how to service a machine or any approvals or manuals you can create in a document and link it to a wt part oh okay but we also have so also in my my company we have all our uh, functional specification technical specification uh, quality approvals all this are captured in wt document and saved in winchill mm -hmm. so you have a document and you need access control you don't want to share you don't want to put in your sharepoint so if you put in sharepoint everyone will have that access and sharepoint doesn't have a version control so which is the latest version of the document that i should use that's why when it is document management it will come to uh, this version control and access policies all those things okay Okay, so there are a lot of other things we can do uh, in OER. So here there is another example. What they are going to do is, so this one. Um, so how do we define a OER for an attribute? Okay, if you see, this is the syntax. ID is number. So number is the internal name of the attribute. So where do we find the internal name? So here it says, uh, doesn't say number here, but if you go to uh, type an attribute management, go to that specific object. Here we have all the attributes available for this object. If you type number, so this is the internal name. So we have to use the same internal name here. And uh, every attribute has its own generator okay the folder it says folder path attribute algorithm uh, so this is the algorithm uh, for number it's number generator okay so we define this tag so usually it will be like this And these three are the argument for this number generator. So even though this is XML, what it's going to do is it's going to call this uh, class file. And it's going to pass all these three as an argument. And it's going to return a value which is going to apply it for this number. Same thing here. So now what I'm trying to do is, what 
I'm going to create a sequence. Say five. It should start with TD hyphen, the container name from which I'm creating the document hyphen and a five digit number. Upload the OER. You see, TD hyphen, the name of the product, hyphen, and a five-digit number. So likewise, if you want to include uh, an attribute name, so let's say, uh, so whatever I put here in my name should come part of my uh, number. I can do that. Mm, let's try that. I uh, entered my uh, name as testdoc09. So here it is testdoc09 and td hyphen. This is static. This comes from a sequence. This comes from an attribute value. See how the number is dynamic. Similarly, you can configure not only for uh, name number, you can configure for any attribute you wish using OER. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it's what's the next one. So we have folder. Let's see how we can change folder for test document. Okay, so I want to create uh, my test document under design folder. How do I do it? Okay, copy this. Paste it here. Let's see what happens now. You see, uh, the auto-selected folder is slash design, but by default, it's selecting the select folder. So this is where the next part comes into play, the attribute constraint. How the attribute is displayed. Here, if you see, I have server pre-generated value. So we need to add additional constraint to move the select for to move this radio button selection from select folder to auto select folder.
So this uh, PTC help center can find all uh, configuration related articles here. Just search, okay, I need to uh, create an OIR for custom folder, then it will give you all the articles with the solution implemented. the wrong place. Now you see this one is highlighted and it's only applicable for test documents. If I go to the general, you won't even see the design. So this one is highlighted. You can configure OAR for each type and its subtype and also at container level. So you can control how the UI should display the attribute that OAR generates. The two things, the value for the attribute and how it is generated. Now it say it's generated. Okay, now I want to see uh, the auto generated number. We do that. Okay, let's see the constraints defined. So the value is fine for number. Let's see the constraint defined for number. Okay, so here there's no constraint defined for number. So let's make one. No, it's there, uh, bro. It's there? 43 or 40. Ah, yep, here, right. It has server assigned constraint and immutable constraint. Immutable means we cannot change it. So what I need to do is I need to command this immutable constraint for num uh, number. So See, now it says generated, but still I can give my own number for this. Okay, just give me a minute. I'm going
sorry guys okay now you can see how we can control the attribute value and how it is displayed in the ui okay let's go to the next one just versioning First, we'll see how to create a custom version. Then we will apply that version uh, using OER. Um, so now we need uh, to create an XML file. So this is a simple uh, version sequence. Instead of uh, one, it has zero, one, zero, two. Okay, now we are going to load this. Okay, this is a newly downloaded file. This is my current version. You see, the first version name is numeric. It's a state-based version. Another one is mill standard. These are the two versions we saw in our uh, Lifecycle administration. Let me quickly show you. Mill standard and numeric. So this is so this command what I executed. What it's going to go do is it's going to retrieve the loaded version from the system and save it in this location. Now we'll add this new one to the existing file. Now we need to load this. This is your uh, WC admin password. Okay, now we have loaded a custom version called file based one. Now we need to update our OER to follow this version.
see now it's following 0.1.1 .1. previously it was a.1 and if you say numeric it's going to follow 1.1 .1. now we have our own up sequence 0.1.1 uh some users will ask us to create a uh, version sequence aa.1 ab.1 and there are a few uh, characters that they want to skip uh, for example uh, some want to skip the d so the first is a.1 b.1 c.1 and it should not go to e.1 but it should go to uh, d.1 from e. i mean it should skip d and go to e.1 so then we will uh, open our version sequence create a new one copy this remove the d and uh, uh, give a custom name and apply it through the oer any questions uh the version uh, xml which you have downloaded so that is a default one uh, default template right manoj bro this one uh, comes out of the box so this is the one which comes out of the box so oh, we downloaded okay. it added our uh, custom sequence and uploaded it and mm -hmm. if you see the mil standard and uh, the numeric are the one we saw in our life cycle mm -hmm. yes Okay. Next one is uh, to assign a custom life cycle. Okay. First, we'll create a life cycle, and uh, we will assign that life cycle through OAI. Go to life cycle administration. Let's see what's the current life cycle. So, in work, released, cancelled. create test life cycle we'll have four states concept design Prototype and release. Okay, so this is a basic life cycle. So there is no rules, access controls, or workflows. Save and close. Don't forget to check in your life cycle. go to your oer and go to your life cycle before we create the object uh, this one is 0.1.1 okay if this is a old document before we apply that uh, oer if i revise this one it will go to b so only the new objects so that's why it's got object initialization rules whenever an object is created that's when it will take the current oer and apply it to it so anything created before that won't have that uh, change okay create a new document Oh, 
I didn't upload it over here. Now you can see the lifecycle template is test LC and it has the required state. Okay. Team template. So uh, when an object is created, what roles we need to assign to that object comes from a team. So we for that we need a custom team template. Go to arc, go to templates, team templates, create a new template. And what roles we need to add. And if you want to add participant, we can do it. But for now, let's To have a member step. <clears throat> I don't know why the member step is not displaying here, but the member step will show. Um, uh, let's show it here in my. So whatever uh, the roles and the participants we selected from our team template will be populated here for this object. <laughs> okay, so secure label is not required for now. So likewise, we can dynamically generate value for attributes of an object and how it is displayed, whether it's server generated, the user should not edit it. Or server generated, the user can edit it. Or it's uh, editable by the user. Or you want to completely turn off the auto numbering. 
So all these configurations we can do through OERs. So that's the power of OER. And if I create the same object at a different container, so now I'm creating it in a library. You won't see any of that change. So this is the change coming from our org level OER. So we created one org level OER for a five digit number. So other than that, it follows the basic life cycle. It uh, created at the default folder and don't have that custom numbering or the revision sequence. So depends on the business requirement, you have to create OERs. Uh, so sometimes if you don't understand the concept of OER, so you always go with customization. You can also write Java code to achieve all those things in the farm process. What is a farm process? Right? That's during our customization class, we will see. Okay, I create a document here. So whatever uh, value I select in this wizard, it is processed using a farm processor class. Here it's create doc farm processor. This is where the actual object is created using Java APIs with the values collected from this farm. And whatever I do in my OER, I can write code to select folder for this object. Uh, depends on the type of the product name. Can use a custom lifecycle template so I can do whatever I want in my farm browser, but that is customization. This is configuration. We always prefer configuration. So if you get the chance to uh, achieve a business requirement using configuration, that should be your first preference instead of going to customization. But many don't understand the detailed technical implementation of OER. They it's not just like create, applying a, a custom sequence, okay? You can also have a Boolean loop. So based on, we can also have a switch case inside a OER. You can also have Boolean string constants bring in inside a OER. And a bunch of other things that's advanced OER configuration, which we are not going to cover part of this training, okay? So any questions on the OER? But if you came across a requirement whether you think we can use OER, you can always uh, contact me. I'll guide you. Okay, but you need to understand what is OER, how to use it, and why we need OER. Okay, guys. Uh, so we have two more topics in business administration. One is policy, type and attribute manager, and preference. Actually, three topics. Preference is not a big one. So we have policy administration. That is nothing but ACLs, access control rules. And type and attribute manager. So how to create a type, attributes, global enumeration, and constraints that we are going to see in our next class. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions and make sure you have your system up and running because without hands-on, you can easily forget all those things, okay? Whatever I said here. So you need to get hands-on. You need to create all the OERs by yourself. Once you have your system ready, let me know. I'll give you the login details for uh, the PTC support site. Okay, Okay, Manoj. Okay, so we can close the session if you don't have any other question. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you.